today we're going to run through what we did yesterday and um, and then also review what we did um, a little while back on finding angles. So we're going to be finding missing sides, finding the value of x, the length of the missing side in the right triangle, and down here finding the missing angle. Remember when you find the angle you have to do the inverse function so on some of your calculators you have to do the second. But we're still going to be applying the SOHCAHTOA concept that we've been um, discussing a lot lately. Um, so remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And when you set them up, you just label your triangle to figure out what you have and what you need and take it from there. So in this first triangle, 64 degrees is given. So across from that angle that's given, that's my opposite. Across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. The remaining side is the adjacent. And then I look for what's marked. The adjacent and the opposite are marked or opposite and adjacent are marked, but the one that uses O and A, and that's tangent. So I do the tangent of the angle equals the opposite over the adjacent. Now remember that we talked yesterday about whether the letter is on the top or on the bottom, and because the letter, the variable, the x that I'm solving for is the in the denominator and the bottom of this fraction, I have to flip-flop these two things, and to solve, I end up using division. If it were on the top, I would use multiplication. This one's on the bottom. So it is x equals 16 over the tangent of 64. And so I take my calculator, and, and I just have to plug it in as I see it. It's 16 over means divide the tangent of 64. I hit my answer, and I can approximate this. It depend on, like, if you get multiple choice, just look for the one that's the closest. If you're doing it on your own, I really don't care what you round it to. I'll call that about 7.8. Um, these directions say round to the nearest tenth, so that's probably what your assignment is going to say as well, round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so I go to my next one. Same thing, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to look at the angle that's given, and this one, 29, is given. I go across from that is my opposite. Across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. The remaining side is adjacent. The opposite and hypotenuse are marked, which means I use sine. So it is the sine of the angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Because x is in the top, I multiply x in the bottom I divide, x in the top I multiply. I end up doing 16 times the sine of 29 to get x. And again, I just take out my calculator, 16 times the sine of 29, um, and I get 7 point, yeah, it comes out to be 7.8-ish again. Okay, that was just sort of fluke, so x is about 7.8. So I hope you kind of get the idea. If you have a calculator, it's really handy. If you don't have a calculator, um, find some kind of, um, pull out your phone. I'm sure your phone has this option on it, like I showed you in, in a past video. My phone, I have to go to a different screen, but it's on there. Or there should be an option on your Chromebook to find a trig calculator. You could just type that in. But I find my angle, go across opposite, Across from the right angle, hypotenuse. The remaining side is the adjacent. I have opposite and adjacent. And so this one is the tangent of 68 equals the opposite over the adjacent. This time again, the variable's on top, so I'm going to multiply. I do 13 times the tangent of 68 to get x. Plug it in my calculator, 13 times tan 68, I end up with 32.2-ish. So x is roughly 32.2. One last one, again, just to run through it. It looks like it's another tangent again. Um, I was hoping I had a cosine one on here, but didn't. Um, not a big deal. Just know what cosine looks like and when you work through. Um, but you're going to go through that same process. So this is opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. I have another tangent 
opposite and adjacent tangent of 47 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Again, the x is in the denominator, so I flip-flop those. x is equal to 16 divided by tangent 47. So that's what I plug in my calculator, 16 divided by tangent 47, and I get my answer about 14.9. x is roughly 14.9. Okay, so that's the new stuff. That's finding the side. I did want to refresh your memory on the old stuff where you actually have to find the um, angles because remember that used the inverse function. But you start it the same way. This is the angle that I'm interested in. I go across from there. That's my opposite. Across from the right is the hypotenuse. The remaining side is the adjacent. This one is opposite and hypotenuse. So therefore, I'm going to be using sine. And so I do the sine of the angle that I don't know, I'll just put an x in there, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And remember, I have to do sine inverse. So um, for me, on the calculator, it's the second sine. And then I just plug that ratio in, 27 divided by 50. And I'll get my angle answer there about 33 degrees, roughly 33 degrees round. Again, go with the closest answer that shows up on your thing. So I had to do the, to plug that in, it's the sine inverse of 27 divided by 50 is what I get. And uh, just label your calculator. It looks like I have another sine inverse here. Let's just pretend, I'm just going to just for my own reasons. I'm going to move that number over here, okay? So um, that'll give me a cosine just so I can run through a cosine problem. I know I'm just making up my own work as I go here, um, but I can. I'm, I'm the teacher. I'll decide, right? So across from the angle is the opposite. Across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. The remaining side is the adjacent. Adjacent and hypotenuse, that gives me the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so I do cosine inverse of 49 divided by 55. Plug it in my calculator again. Second cosine, 49 divided by 55. And that'll give me my angle. My angle ends up being 27 degrees. So x is roughly 27 degrees. Um, Again, just a, a review on when you use the inverse and when you use the regular. If you're finding the angle, you have to use the inverse. If you're finding the side, you use the regular. So good luck. Um, as always, have a great day. If you have any questions, just make sure you ask.